Hi everyone, this week we're doing some conservation at the Potteries Museum in Stoke-on-Trent. I'm here with Deb and we're just looking at some of the finds that we've been conserving this week. And I thought we'd just share one very exciting one with you, which is this one, this one here, which is this really nice pyramid. Sword, yeah, sword pyramid, it's lovely. And that was, that was, the, that had still got quite a lot of soil and it's nice to see it like that. It says it's sort of, this is what it looked like before we started conservation. Oh, and as nice. you can see, it's got quite a lot of sunken garnets in it. Oh, and that's what the soil's caught in. It right, is, okay. yeah. And also what makes this object so exciting is what we found at the very top of here. Oh, where there's a hole. Yeah. A setting of some sort. So we found these two little tiny fragments. This one is a gold foil piece. Oh yeah. Quite similar to the ones that go behind the garnets. But then we have this object here. Yeah. Which looks like a bit of glass and we can see it on the screen here. What do you what do, what do you think of that, Deb? That's amazing. That yeah, it does it's a, it is it's a little bit of tiny tiny piece of what Saxon glass. And it's got, it looks as though it's highly coloured in well red and blue. It's like a, a little red cross. Oh, that's with incredible. a blue background. Well that that means it must be a a very thin bit of this sort of millefiori, you know, the stick of rock type thing where you've got lots of strands of coloured glass that you twist together yeah. and pull and then cut a really thin thin slice. It must be a thin slice if you've got that foil. Yeah, it's amazing. Because the light has to go through it to get to that foil, doesn't it? And where was it? Right inside right there. Right at the very top. So, do we have any other objects which have glass like this, this yeah, type in? Yeah, we will, yeah, we've got one here, which is also, this is a... This, we're very lucky with the hoard. Everywhere else people would look, go mad if they had one pyramid. We've got quite a few sword pyramids, and here's another one. And there's some... Actually, actually it's a similar shape and size of settings, isn't it? I hadn't yes. noticed that before. Yeah, it is. Right, so... So that one's full of red and white squares. That's quite funky, isn't it, that one? And it'd be interesting to compare it with that one, perhaps at a similar yeah. scale. Yeah, so that this one already has the setting in situ. So what were these sword pyramids used for? Well, apart from being wonderfully ornate this way up, they would actually have been hanging that way, we think. And you can see why. If you look at the bottom where you, well, the top, as you've cleaned it then, you've got this big hole going down into the body of the pyramid. A, th a, a piece of fabric, woven fabric or leather would have gone through there. And these pieces would have been straps on a, a scabbard or a, a, the sheath of the sword and they would have tied, they would have been the decorative ends of ties to hold the sword in place, which is not such a bad idea because if you lean forward with a sword of that weight, it could just fall out and slice your leg. Yeah. But it, they also, these strips are also known as peace bands because it's thought that they, it stopped a warrior who was a bit drunk fighting with someone because by the time he'd undone the straps, he'd have calmed down. Whether that's true, I don't Oh, that's very interesting. It is, isn't it? That's great, thank you. So we've finished um, working here this week. We'll come back in July to do the very last of the objects. This is actually the very last pommel cap that we have left to clean out of all the hoard. So that's quite exciting and we'll share that with you in July. And also we have the last little garnet piece as well. But it's the, the end of the hoard, of oh, all the dirty things here at Stoke.